first today is a mysterious case. 47 years ago, a body of a young woman was found on a roadside in Hertfordshire, apparently a victim to a suspected hit and run. But detectives have never been able to identify who she was or inform her family and friends. But today, you might hold the answers. I would hope that there is somebody out there would have remembered her. It will put an end to this and she can rest in peace. Hitchhiking was a way of getting around from place to place. Back in the 70s, it was the norm. Times are a little bit different then. In the early 70s, David Liversidge, his wife Barbara, and their one year old son lived in the Bedfordshire town of Stockfold. Back then, he worked as a delivery driver. It wasn't unheard of for me to pick up somebody and bring them home and they doss on the settee or we give them a spare bedroom. If I was going somewhere near where they were heading the next day, I would say, we'll stay overnight and then I'll take you up there tomorrow, you know. In February 1972, David was doing a delivery in South London. It was a dreadful day. The weather was horrendous. It was one of those days where daylight didn't appear at all. I saw some a figure walking past, and they put the hand out, and I pulled up. They got into the car, and they threw the bag in, and uh, I asked them where they come from, and she spoke in broken English in French. The woman told David her name was Odell and that she was here because she was studying in Cambridge. It wasn't far from David and Barbara's home, so he offered to put her up. Over the evenings we were talking, she sort of said, just hoping to get a job. And I said, well, if you're looking just for a job, my place is desperate for staff. And they started her straight away. And she stayed, and it was like six months that she stayed. Odell told the couple that she had a sister who lived near Paris but talked very little about her life and never revealed her last name. She didn't talk about other people. She was pretty quiet, she kept herself to herself, but she was seen to be quite happy staying around to our place. She was a lovely girl, but we couldn't speak French and she wasn't very good at English. No, she was just somebody that was in our, in in our, our life. life. One day in August 1972, Odell asked the couple for a lift to Cambridge. She said she was going to Cambridge in September to start at an English language school. All I saw was a, an address that she got in Cambridge. We just drove up and that was the end of it. I knocked on the door, said, I have a young lady here, are you expecting her? And she, yes, I am, bring her in. And Odell walked straight past me, straight down the hall, and I went, well, cheerio then. And that was the end of it, and I never saw her again. Two and a half years later, in the early hours of the 18th of February 1975, a young woman was walking along the A1 near Bulldog in Hertfordshire. A body was discovered. The woman seemed to have been the victim of a possible hit and run. Police couldn't establish who she was. But 35 years later, in 2010, came this image of the dead woman's face, created by forensic artists at the University of Dundee. I saw in the newspaper a picture which I instantly recognised, and my wife was working in the back grooming the dogs, and I walked round there and I said, who do you think that is? And she went, well, that looks like Odell. And I went, yeah. She's been run over. David and Barbara contacted the police. But because Odell revealed so little about herself to the couple, her full identity remains a mystery. Just find it very strange, really. Very sad. You just think that her sister will probably be sitting there wondering where her sister's been for 50 years. It's so very sad that there's a young girl being buried in Stevenage 
and somebody in that family must be thinking, where is she? now with Dave Grimstead from Missing People Charity Locate International. And Dave, we just heard a bit about uh, the victim there, but what have you been able to establish as to just who she was? I mean, since that appeal went back out in 2010, um, people first saw that, that image, the, the facial image that was done by the specialist at Dundee University. David and Barbara immediately recognised this as somebody they knew. Uh, we know that when uh, she was with David and Barbara, she talked about her sister talked about her mother. And you can imagine the pain that they've endured over the years, not knowing what happened to, to this young woman who David and Barbara knew her as Odell or Odile, maybe had the surname uh, of Ludic. She had fair hair, um, hazel eyes, um, and she had a piercing to, to her right ear, but she seemed at ease hitchhiking across the country. And at some stage she talked about going to, to Newquay and, and hiking down there to see friends. Um, and obviously then we've got the language school as well. Okay, so she was often seen at the time to be wearing a coat similar to what we've got in the studio here. What other clothing was she wearing at the time um, when she was found? I mean, we're hoping that the combination of the, the Afghan coat and the, the image that has been done, together with the other clothes that she was wearing, which was a brown leather waistcoat, a white Chelsea blouse and a chiffon scarf, and she had black jeans as well. Okay, now, crucially, what she didn't have was identification when she was found. Yeah, she had no belongings with her on that day, so no shoes. Um, David and Barbara talk about a haversack bag that she would have had with her. And they also described quite a distinctive copper ring that wasn't a proper ring. It was taken from um, a piece of plumbing pipe that she'd fashioned into a ring. None of those belongings had been found, and obviously, She's found at the side of the road, no belongings, no shoes, and we don't know what happened to her prior to that accident. So much of this is still a mystery, and the police at the time thought this was a hit and run, and sadly, no details of that vehicle have been established. No details of that vehicle, and we know from uh, the reports at the time that a witness saw um, this lady on the side of the A1 in the early hours of the morning, about 5.30 in the morning, on the 18th of February at the A1 near Baldock, so busy. Mm -hmm a busy uh, piece of road and we, we don't know what she was doing immediately before that, that accident. How can our viewers help you today? Because you're confident people may still be able to assist with this despite the passage of time. So this is back in 1975 and we're asking people to think back to, to that time. And for us, it's really important to find this lady's name so that we can find justice for, for her try and establish what it was that happened to her before that, that tragic event. Mm -hmm. And if we're asking people to cast their minds back, there's some things that happened in 1975 that might help. So, for example, Margaret Thatcher, she'd just become the leader of the Conservative Party at the time. Bye Bye Baby by Bay City Rollers, was top-selling single, Jaws, a blockbuster film. These things can help people cast their memory back. And recently you've had a case where, from the same, same time, you've yeah. had a result. Certainly back in, in 1975, later in that month, you had the Moorgate disaster. And then later in the summer, you had the Nebworth Festival where, where Pink Floyd were playing. And since an appeal that we did on another case, we found the name of a person from 1975. So you may be watching this and you may see that image. It may resemble somebody you knew. Come forward. OK, so thank you. Well, can you help solve? this truly sad mystery. If you have any information, the number to call is 08000 468 999. It's completely free. Our lines are open until midday. You can also text us anytime, 633 99.